I think there's so much stigma connected to being a woman in the thirties and early into early forties that you're something like somehow flawed or something wrong with you or like, why aren't you settled down with a man or whatever that is. Um, And I think that's bullshit. (laughs) (laughs) I would Uh, compare. (laughs) And at first it was like kind of silly, right? Um, But she wouldn't stop. And it became kind of a family joke uh, because I thought it was a personally ridiculous idea. But as I was out and about in my life, I started to have all these points of connection to him. Like everywhere I would go, it would be a degree apart of separation. Oh my gosh. Again and again and again and again. So I started to be like, what is happening here? (laughs) There's something to this, like, no, 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 but, but maybe. ones welcome back to real relationships i'm cheryl muir and this week we're joined by the incredible melissa center melissa is an actor filmmaker and crowdfunding coach we're going to be talking to her about her play marrying jake gyllenhaal which is screening at edinburgh fringe festival as a filmmaker melissa has an award-winning short film called rv about women's reproductive rights which is screened to over half a million people all around the world and counting and as an actor she has performed and appeared in Grey's Anatomy and True Detective. Melissa and I talk about self-love, self-acceptance, what it is to be a woman in her 30s who's single, who's either looking for love or maybe just living her life and then feeling those external pressures from other people about finding love and being in that partnership. Melissa welcome to Real Relationships, so good to have you. Thank you so much for having me. Absolute pleasure. I'm so excited to dig in today. We're going to be talking about your play, Marrying Jake Gyllenhaal. Am I saying your husband's name correctly? Yes, yes, yes. Perfect. (laughs) And it's going to be your last name as well, presumably. I need to get it right. (laughs) So the the play is appearing at um, Fringe Festival in Edinburgh. Why don't you tell people what the play is about? So I have to go back in time a little bit. My mom, uh, this was a few years ago, I, I, in my single life, (laughs) my mom started to send me articles about Jake Gyllenhaal and I'm sure y'all know who he is. He's Mm -hmm. a fancy A-list movie star. Um, And uh, for whatever reason, she just got it hooked into her brain that we're supposed to, we're soulmates soulmates, and that we're supposed to like end up together. And so she would send me articles and she would send me um, emails and information about him being single, him being, you know, he's half Jewish, I'm Jewish, Um, you know, an eligible Jewish bachelor, you know, wanting to start a family, things about his sister and how he admires her and this and this and this over, over time. And at first it was like kind of silly, right? Um, But she wouldn't stop. And it became kind of a family joke uh, because I thought it was a personally ridiculous idea. Um, despite the fact, you know, we, bar- we are both in show business, however, he is who he is. <laughs> um, but as I was out and about in my life, I started to have all these points of connection to him. Like everywhere I would go, it would be a degree apart of separation. Oh my gosh. Again and again and again and again. So I started to be like, what is happening here? <laughs> There's something to this, like, no, 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 but, but maybe. And um, I had, I had uh, finished a couple of projects, a couple of film projects. And um, like a couple years prior, I had sat down in a writing class and I thought this was kind of a funny idea. And so I sat down to write a, a rom-com version of what this might be, set it aside, made some projects that were more urgent um, in terms of self-expression and in, ser- in terms of the capacity of me to actually produce them. And uh, a friend of mine invited me to a writing group. Uh, I thought this is a good excuse for me to just start something new. I didn't know what I was gonna write. Uh, I I had a bit of self-reflection where I was like, gosh, the past few years have been really hard. And this connects to the relationship stuff. 
um, and my content has been kind of bleak. And so I felt this real sense of need to like get back in touch with the girl who I felt like I used to be mm. when I was singing and dancing in New York City and like just light and comedic. And I felt like I had lost her. So I showed up to the uh, writing session the first day and I opened my laptop and all of a sudden this play started to just pour out of me and it just really kind of bubbled up and suddenly I was like hearing songs in my head and so I was writing lyrics to songs and this whole journey to, you know, it's kind of an intersection between this pursuit of this idea of, uh, you know, Pr Prince Charming Jake Gyllenhaal butted up against the experiences that I've had as a single woman in Los Angeles, excuse me, um, and the struggles of like trying to find happiness and fulfillment mm. and success along the way. Yeah. So it's a solo play with music. I sing, I rap, I dance. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, it, it premieres uh, this Friday actually at Edinburgh, Fe Edinburgh Festival online. Incredible. Digital what, program. what are they doing with Fringe this year in terms of, are they having an in-person element as well as digital? They are, they are. It's partly online and partly in person. And um, it's, you know, they had to really be scrappy this year because no one knew what was going to happen with yeah. um, COVID. Uh, but they do have quite a few shows in person um, and also programming online, which is wonderful for me because I get to share my, you know, my play with such a broad audience. Um, and it's also wonderful for people who like can't necessarily get to Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. it makes are more accessible it, it, you know you can really get to know like new artists and uh, explore new expression and and so it's a it's a really cool thing have they opened up the tickets globally as well for people in the u.s or people anywhere in the world to purchase or is it just restricted to uk anyone can purchase yeah that's incredible so as long as you have like the link to the show and it's online you know because obviously you're not going to be able to if you're living in texas or whatever you're not going to be able to like transport yourself suddenly to edinburgh yeah. but if, I, I wish you could um but if it's an online show you can watch it and then um depending on how the artist set it up for myself it's available for the entire run of the festival which goes through august 30th and it's digital on demand so you purchase a ticket and then you have basically the month to 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 watch it. Beautiful, perfect. I'm so fascinated by, by how this came to be as well. And the story of your mom is absolutely like heartwarming and hilarious, which I'm sure is gonna be the flavor of the play as well. But tell me a little bit more about the, some of these signs and synchronicities. Does that also link into some of the themes in the play of like, well, is this crazy or like what's going on? Totally. So much of the journey of the play is like this, line between I guess you would say fantasy and reality yeah. and it's 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 hard sometimes to tell what's what mm. um, I actually have people who I, I had seen um, a run of the show that I did as a live stream and they're they were thinking that some of the things that were fiction were actually true and vice versa um, but I would say some synchronicities so so one major thing I had the good fortune of appearing on an episode of Masters of Sex, which was a television show on, on Showtime. And um, this was already at a point in time where my mom had, you know, planted the seed in my brain. I already had like weird interactions with other people. Um, I booked a role on this show. Uh, Annalie Ashford uh, was one of the stars of the show. And my scene was going to be with her and Sarah Silverman. So I show up to set and it's in the green room and they're really lovely, the two of them. They were like mm. so welcoming. And, and uh, we, were, we just struck conversation and Annalie was saying that she was gonna be starting rehearsals for a show in New York City. And I was like, oh my gosh, you know, I used to live in New York, what's the show? And she said, oh, it's, it's Sunday in the Park with George. And I literally had just read that Jake Gyllenhaal was gonna be starring in that with her. Oh my gosh. So I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> with Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah. I was like, oh yeah. And then like in a weird thing, um, her husband happens to be best friends with a dear friend of mine in New York. So it's like all this weird interconnected yeah. world. I'm like, I have to tell you, my mom has this like really weird obsession that we're supposed to like marry each other. And she probably thought it was nuts, but you know, she kind of yeah. laughed it off. 
Um, so that was just like one of many yeah. things where I would be in a space and someone would be like, oh, I, I, I literally just saw him at, uh, you know, Air One grocery store yeah. or so like funny. I would showed up to work one day. I was working at this like tech company and, 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 and mentioned my mom's crazy antics and, and my boss was like, I, I, I just bumped into him, like literally bumped into him <laughs> in Venice <laughs> in California. I was like, what? And then he said, yeah. And then I saw him later on, like at, at dinner with my, yeah. with my fiance. So that kept yeah. happening over and over and over again. So a lot of this stuff is sprinkled in through the show. Yeah. And so yeah. what, in, in, not in the play, but in reality, what was your mom thinking with all these synchronicities happening? She's like, oh, it's a coincidence. Or is she actually thinking this solidifies my plan for my daughter? I, 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 I was hesitant to share when these things would happen because <laughs> I didn't want to feed the monster. Yeah. The beast. You know, I would tell my 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 uh the beast yeah I would tell my siblings or friends or whatever and they're like you can't tell this to mom because it's <laughs> going to make her even more convinced that this is like a thing she's going to be so, booking the day and as we say in England she's going to be buying the hat for the wedding she's going to be buying oh, the hat booking the church oh totally <laughs> <laughs> yeah she yeah she she once I put this show up um or she knew about it she she's kind of like paused on sending me <laughs> stuff about him because <laughs> because you'll understand you know when yeah. your audience watches it like there's this very specific dynamic that we have and uh, a conclusion that I kind of come to at the mm -hmm. end of this and so she's been a little bit better about like the obsessive sending me things but every now and again she'll like yeah. slip in a Jake sighting or yeah. you know That's he's still single or yeah <laughs> whatever I don't know <laughs> So I know it's really lighthearted, but I know there's going to be like some deeper meanings and themes threaded throughout the play without wanting to give anything away. What is it you hope people learn from your play? Um, a couple of things, I think. Um, there's no like one way to have fulfillment and happiness in life. Mm -hmm. I think so much of it is, uh, and I was just do, like writing a social media post about this today. Um, learning to differentiate between the voices that are coming from like exterior so pressures and voices from society or from your friends telling you what you should do how you should be happy how you should interact with the world and learning to separate that from like what you truly want mm. um so a lot of the journey is like the tough road to that conclusion yeah. and saying really like yes to yourself um saying yes to exploring all the nooks and crannies of who you are um and you know there's not this like fairy tale especially like being a woman um finding prince charming isn't real and it's not going to make your life better like you have to you have to find your own um sense of self and sense of fulfillment period and stop regardless of who else is in or out of your life yeah um yeah, so it's like uh, when audience see it, I, I I hope that they can relate to my journey and feel like less alone in, yeah. in their personal struggles um, and kind of like have permission to, to maybe explore their own expression or life choices in the way that's suitable for them. Yeah, incredible. Um, yeah. We talk a lot in, in mainstream personal development about self-love and self-acceptance. What does loving and accepting yourself mean to you and what does it look like practically you know it's a it's a i think it's a lifelong journey yeah. i think it's not being afraid of the parts of yourself that are you mean outside the norm or that are you know vulnerable i think it's i think it's saying yes to vulnerability i think it's saying yes to exploring you know, the interests or quirks that you have uh, that make you unique. Um, I think it's allowing yourself to have difficult experiences and feelings like fully. It's such like a personal journey, I think, to learn how to take care of yourself. Mm. Um, for me, I think it's been like it's on different levels, right? It's your mind, your body, your heart, your spirit. Yeah. Um, it's making sure that you're taking your care of your body physically, taking care of your body in terms of like boundaries. Yeah. Um, I 
meditation, you know, taking care of your mind, um, therapy when you need it, yeah. um, letting yourself, if you have a bad day or a bad experience, like letting yourself have that, mm. um, being okay with not like work, work, work and being in action all the time, like being okay with having a day where you just do nothing. Um, learning what lights you up and what brings you joy and feeding that yeah. more and more versus uh, trying to uh, analyze or understand what's not working yeah. so much. Mm. Um, Giving yourself permission like, to do what you love to do. That's right, that's yeah. right. Like it's okay to, to just be happy and to, and to make choices even if they don't seem logical or even if, you know, it's not what someone else would choose to do, like say yes to the things that make you feel more expansive versus yeah. like contracted. Yeah. Yeah. More in the heart and the intuition and your passion rather than being logical. Like I have to do this thing rather than actually I want to do this thing. It doesn't make sense to me necessarily, but I feel alive when I do it. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And that's, that's a newer permission that I'm giving myself, you know, I, at, at my ripe age, <laughs> <laughs> I think we're probably the same sort of age. <laughs> <laughs> so it does, you know, it does take time for you to be, to, to, to trust that, yeah. you know, to trust that like, no, that I think that's actually the way. Yeah. Yeah. Have you been on a journey as well with, cause I, I know I, I have with, with accepting the fact that you're a creative soul or was that something that you accept, accepted about yourself quite early on? You know, I've always been this way. Um, I, I, as a kid, I was always performing. I always was in the plays. I was always singing and dancing. Um, I've, this has been a part of my identity that I, I feel very strongly about for, for a long time. Mm -hmm. I would say that there's been friction in terms of like the logic part and the like practical yeah. stuff in terms of how to, given that I'm a creative and I pursue that professionally, like how do you honor that and also not be over encumbered by like, oh, you know, you need to have a specific lifestyle that is stable, like whatever that stable thing is, mm -hmm. right? The nine to five to, I mean, and all of that. All to, yeah, yeah, like navigating the, the alchemy of things to make a creative life work yeah you know because it's it's hard you don't want to you can't really like fit yourself into specific boxes when you're a creative person so it's finding that marriage yeah. that can take care of yourself and and make sure that you have your basic needs met but not feel like you're kind of cutting off your limbs yeah to fit into a system that doesn't make sense for who you are yeah, not sacrificing a part of yourself to do the logical thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I know you have your play at Fringe. What other projects are you excited about working on in the future? Any ones that are coming up in the pipeline that you want to talk about? Ooh, um, right now, this has really been like the main event for me. I, I, I started to write a book based on like some similar themes in terms of relationship. Um, and and self-care actually uh so it's kind of like personal narrative so it's it's, it's along the same theme lines but I, I set that aside for the time being um because i need to focus on this show and i also took a trip to new york for a couple of months to gauge you know how to bridge the gap back because i live in los angeles mm -hmm. right now so it's a lot of transition for me um but that's something that is like kind of in the hopper um and you know i've come off the past several years from really pumping out con like work films mm. and so I, I also know i need to give myself a little breathing room yeah a little space um, yeah it's the way that my creative process works is kind of like there's a point at which i know i need to create the thing but yeah. up until then it's kind of I just have to go about my daily life until yeah. it's like, it must happen now. 
<laughs> yeah. I can understand and relate to that. I have a very similar process. It's kind of yeah. stop, stop, go. But when it's go, it's all go. And then when it's stop, it's like I have to just be in the process and let it let it hit me. Yeah. And then it's it's go again. Exactly. Yeah. I get yeah. that. So just going back to the play for a moment, I um one of the themes that it does touch on as well is what it is to be a woman in her kind of mid to late 30s, approaching her 40s and being single. What is it you want to kind of say about that? What are your thoughts on that? I think there's so much stigma connected to being a woman in the 30s and early into early 40s that you're something like somehow flawed or yeah. that there's something wrong with you or like why aren't you settled down with a man or whatever that is um and I think that's bullshit <laughs> yeah, I would concur <laughs> uh, especially given some of the experiences I've had with with like unfortunate experiences I've had with some male folk uh the past several years like um I know that there are wonderful people out there both male and female to like have romantic relationships with um but uh I, I think more and more at least what I'm experiencing out in the world in terms of reading and people's experiencing like experiences you know the number one relationship has to be with yourself and that's okay yeah and like I'd rather at this point from what I've learned the past few years I'd rather be personally satisfied and fulfilled partner less than with someone who's going to be like not the right fit yeah. abusive yeah disrespectful you know yeah just to have like a person there yeah so uh so yeah I think we can celebrate being full people and having the capacity to make choices that are right for ourselves, like at this age. Yeah. Hopefully, if it's in your desires, right, to like be partnered, and it is for mine, like mm. we find that person. But I think, I think the understanding who we are first has to come first. Yeah. Absolutely. I love everything you said there. And I, I think what really stands out for me too is just because someone's in a relationship doesn't mean they're happy. And just because somebody is on their own and single, it doesn't mean they're alone and miserable. Right. You know, there's, there's, there's shades of gray and everything in between. Yeah. Yeah. And like the grass is always greener, I think. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's true. Yeah. 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 I'd love to end with our two real questions that we finish off every episode with. The first one is how would you define a healthy relationship? Okay, I think a healthy relationship, there has to be mutual respect. I think um, a healthy relationship, both parties are equally vulnerable with each other. Um, I think listening, like real listening is mm -hmm. integral. You have to, um, have like a certain level of independence in a healthy relationship. But I think you also have to make choices that consider the other person involved. Yeah. Um, I think it's a fine line between like a codependence and like having two full, fully realized adults like yeah. kind of come together. That healthy interdependence between the two of them. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's ideal. Um yeah, I mean, you always hear like communication, 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 um, but that is essential. And I think, and something I kind of like experienced recently with a with a, a relationship that I thought actually was quite healthy. Um, you know, being being radically honest with yourself, and when things come up, being able to voice those things, yeah. even if 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 they feel scary. I think on both ends is important and and to be the receiving person of that to honor where that person is coming from um and to remove any judgment really yeah yeah beautiful and a similar question but slightly different what does love mean to you what is love <sighs> That's the big word. Yeah. Um, I think love means like, like total connection. 
um, love means um, like service beyond yourself. Mm. Yeah, the word like union comes up for me. Yeah, partnership, union. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. And we're yeah. going to have all the details down below of where to find you on social media and where to find your play. Um, is there anything else you'd like people to know about you or how to connect with you? Where can they find you? Um, you know, hit me up on the Insta. <laughs> is, that, is that the place where you use the app online? And Instagram's I, where I found you. Yeah, I mean, I think Instagram I have most most fun with. I'm on Facebook and stuff too, but I I, I like Instagram is is my favorite just because it's so nicely visual. Yeah, um, yeah. I do, this is somewhat random, but I do every other Tuesday uh, put together these videos called Tutu Tuesday, where I'm like out in the world dancing in a tutu. So that's always fun. So I'm actually can... gonna watch out for that. That sounds amazing. Yeah, yeah. I just did one um, yesterday uh, in Columbus with my, with my sister and niece. So uh, that is super fun. Um, and yeah, you know, I always post stuff about my work, my, my films, my, my current play, <clears throat> excuse me, um, on all my social media. Um, you, you know, my website is always pretty up to date with what's going on. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. All right. I'm going to look out for two, two Tuesdays. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.